Now, I can hear the African-American crowd going, see, how do you like it? Hey, good. That's fine. You can do that. But the attack is just ridiculous. It's insane. And if I'm sitting there as a white or black executive, I'm like, you know what? This is crap. This is complete crap. The latest is that dope smoking, hooker hanging, way, way, way drunk Paul Pierce. Paul Pierce got fired from ESPN because he's an idiot. He's an idiot. I mean, he posts a video on Instagram of him hanging with hookers, smoking weed, drinking out of a 40, and they fired him. And he's like, what? I ain't break no laws. It's my private time. And ESPN's like, yeah, well, that's not how we're hanging here. So where does he surface? He surfaces over here at Fox. But he's still the same dumbass. He's still the same racist. He's still the same moron with an eighth grade education that he's always been. So here's Paul Pierce being incredibly racist. And here's two idiots sitting with him, allowing him to be racist because, well, idiots hang together in groups of threes. Here's Paul Pierce talking about little white girl, Caitlin Clark. Yeah, it's not, it's, let me, it's, it's beyond that, Key. I'm, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to just keep it 100 with you. We saw a white girl in Iowa do mm-hmm. it to a bunch of black girls. Mm-hmm. Well, of course. That, that yeah. made it like, oh, <laughs> that gained my respect. That gained my respect. I, I hear you. You're like, right. that's like, oh, she didn't do this to, to uh, uh, some other little white girls that was over mm-hmm. here and, yeah. and, and Colorado, wherever. She did it to some girls <laughs> from, from LSU yeah, who we did. thought were some dogs. Defending champs. Defending yeah. champs mm-hmm. and put them on their knee and spanked them. Spanked them. But and so that, and I know, but I didn't expect. Oh, there you go. I always got a kick out of that. I was a white dude that kicked every brother's ass in Gary, Indiana over the course of two years. And I used to laugh. Oh, man, you got my respect. And I used to say, well, you don't have mine. Because all I know is I got a shot fake. Your ass goes, I go lay it in. I mean, what are we talking about here? That's the way basketball has evolved, right? The African-American is here and the white guy's got to prove it to him. I got two words for you. My ass Nobody got to prove nothing. I mean, sports is supposed to be the ultimate meritocracy. It's supposed to be the ultimate colorblind. Well, that's all we get out of these former idiots, particularly former NBA and NFL idiots. And if I were Eric Shanks or Brad Yeager, I'd fire his ass tomorrow. At what point do we say enough? At what point do we say these attack on white people, this ability to just say whatever the hell you want as an African-American about white people, has gone far enough. So, you know, Colorado actually had some black girls on it. So, Caitlin Clark has to prove to these three stooges that she can ball? I don't think so. I think Caitlin Clark has proved to the world that she can ball, whether it's against black, white, green, or purple. I'll tell you this, if you really want to criticize, criticize the white coach, Kim Mulkey, and don't criticize her for not having her team on at the anthem. Who cares about that? For putting a little white girl, that little Van Leaf, on Caitlin Clark. I think it was Larry Bird that famously told Dr. J or Magic Johnson, what are you guys doing? You're putting a white guy on me. This kind of stupid has always been all across basketball. Well, that's fine. It can be in locker rooms. It can be there. But when it comes to TV, and it constantly comes to TV, I wonder, where are television executives? Why don't they jump up and say, enough, enough? This is blatant racism. You know, so the little white girls, as these two idiots say, couldn't play. The ones that were at Colorado, they couldn't play. They got to the Sweet 16. I mean, they must have been able to play a little bit. And frankly, if some fat ass, thank God for him, he won one championship when they loaded up a team. Paul Pierce, drug doing, dope smoking, whatever the hell else he's doing, idiot, wants to make it racial. That's bullshit. And at some point, like Kim Mulkey said to women, Kim Mulkey the other day said to women about the Los Angeles Times article, women, where is your voice? Women, where are you? Same thing with white people. Why are we letting these idiots, particularly those of you that are in management, why are we letting these idiots just spout racism left, right, and center? Why isn't anybody fired for this? Look, I get it. Little white guy stands there, at least at ESPN in Building 4, and they're counting the days until they can cash in their stock options and go get their house in Reynolds, uh, Georgia. I understand that. 
But damn, at some point, don't you have to protect the brand? At some point, don't you have to say enough is enough? And the answer to that is absolutely no. Absolutely not. Now, I'm not bitching, whining, and moaning. I'm just giving you common sense here. We all know how this would go if it went the other way. We all know that card. I was telling Charlie this morning. There's a card that you get at ESPN for live events. It's called the Apology Card. It's there during Mike and Mike. It's there during any live shows. If a white dude said this about a black woman beating or a, a, a white, yeah, that apology card would be out so fast, so furious, and here would come Norby. Norby would be running, and the HR person would meet you outside the door. Well, did you just say? Did you just say something about black people? We must fire you. You're not going to be on our airways. Norby would be huffing and puffing. David Seitzler would be all crazy. Michael Schiffman, who is still in it, he would be flipping his hair. Dave Roberts would be like, well, that's not right. I'm an African-American, and that just doesn't seem to be right. Are you crazy? But it's okay. Hey, it's all right. Because some fat-ass, drug-doing, old-head, NBA guy, black guy says it, and it's okay to be racist because Whitey's scared to death. Oh, my God. Could you imagine if someone called one of these tie-wearing executives a racist? They might shit themselves, literally, right down the leg. It would hit their shoes. They'd be like, oh, my God, I don't know what to do. Chicken blank leadership has allowed this to happen, and it's gone too far. It has simply gone too far. Like, we expect it. We expect it from fools that hire someone like Jamel Hill. The CRT police want you to hate white women from middle America as much as they do. This is Jamel Hill's article. A wider conversation about how many black women athletes have been marginalized in their sport despite their invaluable contributions. Well, you know what? They don't play like Caitlin Clark. They don't. Hey, you can name me any great player you want, anyone you want, and they don't play like Caitlin Clark. Steph Curry opened our eyes. By the way, he's black. Steph Curry opened our eyes to how you can become very successful, both as a team and individually, and appeal to everyone by jacking up threes from the logo during a time when it matters. See, Damian Lillard does that, and it don't matter. Damian Lillard, it's just different. People are all different. We love Steph Curry. You love because he's forced on us, Damian Lillard. The basketball world's like, yeah, Damian Lillard's a nice player. You know what I mean? But, come on, he's no Steph Curry. Well, it's the same thing here. All these women are nice players. Angel Reese is a nice player, but when you watch her run, it's like an unathletic. She can't even move her left leg. Caitlin Clark's giving them the business. So I don't give a damn if other women have been marginalized, not marginalized. They're lucky they have a WNBA because it's hemorrhaging money. And the NBA Men's League is funding it. But now you got somebody, and I get it. Where would these race baiters be without a wider conversation about how many black women athletes have been marginalized? The CRT crowd wants you to hate white women, wants to divide us, because that's all they got. You think Jamal Hill could tell you anything about breaking down a defense and offense, tell you anything about sports, tell you anything about what actually happens in a locker room, tell you anything about what a workout or what an athlete does when her fat ass sits around eating bonbons, bitching about race all day? Absolutely. She can't tell you nothing other than, I'm mad about Whitey. And here we are talking about her. I swear to God, if we never spoke of Jamel Hill again, I would be one happy mofo. I would. I would. She sucks. She's the worst. And she got nothing. Like, she ain't pretty. She ain't smart. She's loud, I suppose. And she is just a race-baiting clown. That's it. Go get him, Caitlin Clark. I don't care if you kick the ass of white people, black people, Hispanic. I don't care. Just keep kicking ass. Minor League Baseball, the world is incredibly stupid. Minor League Baseball historically has been known for its various promotions. Amen. 
Come here, first hundred guys gets a bat. Ten cent beer night. Kiss your sister night. I don't know. There's a lot of different things that minor leagues have always promoted. And I got to tell you, the smartest one is always ladies' night. Why? You get a bunch of women coming to the game, two things are going to happen. One, you're going to get a bunch of dudes coming to the game. And two, these women might come back because, as my wife says, nothing looks better than a baseball player with a nice ass in a baseball uniform. That's right. Nobody, nothing looks better, according to my wife. And she ain't wrong. Hey, I like seeing a nice high ass. I've talked about that on the show. Shows that a dude's an athlete. But, of course, we all understand. We all understand that, well, we got somebody going to be mad about it. We got somebody that's saying it's sexist. Here it is, the, the Fresno Grizzlies. Ill-conceived ladies' night. Ill-conceived ladies' night promotion. Seemingly sexualizing female fans by treating them as little more than sexual bait in order to attract men to buy tickets to the game. Well, that's just saying that women don't like sports. And I would argue my wife loves sports. There's nobody I'd rather go to a game with than my wife. That's true. There's nobody. There's nobody I'd rather go sit down, have beers, eat peanuts, and watch the Cubs with than my wife. And I got a lot of really good friends. So they're saying women don't like sports. They're basically saying that the stereotype going back 6,000 years is true. Well, that's crap. Women come to the game maybe because they like coming to the game. And women like coming to the game, oh, I don't know, maybe because they do like seeing baseball players. Hell, and if that's wrong, screw you. But anyway, in doing so, the Grizzlies male-dominated front office. See, there's a shot. We don't have enough women. We got a DEI hire. So there's a little shot there at the front office, male-dominated. Well, so what? The world is male-dominated. What do you want me to tell you? Yeah, I don't want to hear it. (laughs) To pull off a rare trifecta of sexual discrimination, misogyny, exorcism, and misandry all at once. There you go. By treating female non-binary and male fans, you... (laughs) unequally based solely on their gender. Tough. So what? So what? You're not treated the same. I don't care. What? You're not treated the same. You're actually treated better. You know, I have a saying. You know, I always have a saying. I always have a saying. No good deed goes unpunished. And the lovely, gritty Jennifer says, nothing better than men in baseball uniforms. Call me sexist. I don't care. Nice butts are nice. That's right. And some little group here can get all mad about it. That's right. You can get all mad, glad, angry, or sad. Good for you. Go stand in the corner and be mad. Like, we bitch about everything. We bitch about ladies' night. It's ladies' night, and the feeling's right. Oh, yes, it's ladies' night. Oh, what a, oh, what a night. That's right. Man. Honest to God. And people wonder. They say, well, you know, why don't you take us serious? Why don't we take anybody serious that defends women anymore? Because of shit like this. Because of stupid stuff like this. It's just so ridiculous that you just go, hey, uh, I don't know what to tell you. But what I'm going to tell you is you guys are idiots. There is much, much, much worse going on in this world than ladies' night. Hey, have dudes' night and give me half-price tickets, and I'll be there like 99.9% of the time. Don't at me about it either. What are you, nuts? What a bunch of bullshit. Honest to God, it just makes you crazy. It does. It makes you crazy that everything has to be complained about. Everything has to be bitched about. Everything has to be whined about. Everything has to be put out there. And non-binary. I don't even know what non-binary is, and I don't care. Does that mean I stoop animals? Does that mean I stoop same sex? Does that mean I stoop uh, transvestites, transgender? Who am I stooping when I'm non-binary? What the hell does that mean? 
If that means I'm stripping women, that means the other word for non-binary has got to be normal. That's just a normal dude. He likes a good bride. <laughs> That's right, Lee. She's standing over there. I like a nice bride. <laughs> oh, my God, Dockage, you're so sexist. Oh, my God, Dockage, you're the worst. Oh, my God, Dockage, I don't know how any woman puts up with you. Let me tell you how any woman puts up with me. Women love me. Like when I was divorced, it was a borgersmord or smorgasbord of just women, one after the other. I mean, I had all this. I had a job. I had a popular job. And women just get me. They do. So I don't give a damn if some freaking group doesn't like, well, the Grizzlies male-dominated front office. We must be angry about it. Oh, shut up. I'm not even going to say the organization because they're so goddamn ridiculous that it's given me a headache. Usually I get a headache from these bright lights and too much, well, A&W, zero sugar last night as I was watching Indiana State. But these idiots are giving me a headache. We need more ladies' night. We need more wet T-shirt contests. Let's kick it old school. Damn right. The most popular bar day at the great city of Bloomington, Indiana University, used to be Sunday night after spring break at Nick's and then Monday night at Jake's or Oscars or whatever the hell it was called because it kept changing hands. What was it? Sunday night at Nick's, all the sorority girls came back with their tans, and Monday night was a wet T-shirt contest. Yeah! If you don't like it, don't go! Or we can sit there and go, well, those jackasses, uh, uh, my girlfriend's to my left. Shut up. Shut up. I do like this out of Keyshawn Johnson. Keyshawn Johnson famously ripped the ass of Justin Bieber. That's right. He got a piece of Biebs' ass. He did. Because Biebs was going like 120 through his neighborhood in some kind of fancy Bieb car. Johnson pulled him over or stopped at his house, ripped his ass, told the little fella, hey, you're going to kill someone. Well, he's back at it, and I ain't, ba I ain't mad about it. Rasheed Rice was a pain in the ass in college. Rasheed Rice had a nice year with the Kansas City Chiefs, became a go-to guy, even in the Super Bowl, became a stud, going to make a lot of money, going to get a lot of rings if he, well, if he doesn't screw it up. Apparently, he's on his way to screw it up. He was drag racing the other day down the highway, had rented a Lamborghini like at a grand a day, something stupid like that, started going real fast against another dude, spun out, lost control, crashed in, six cars were involved. What did this clown do? This clown got up with a couple of his boys, and walked away. That's what he did. Of course, now the police got him. They have video, and he's going to make it right. Yeah, he's going to make it right. May go to jail. He won't go to jail, but, hey, he could go to jail, and Keyshawn Johnson ain't having it. Keyshawn Johnson says, first of all, this is unfortunate for Rasheed. I know him. He's old enough to know better. That's right. So I'm pissed at him. I've already texted him. He's not going to respond to me because my text was not nice. I spent, plenty, I spent plenty of time with him last year before the draft, doing the draft process, the whole thing here in L.A. and in Dallas as well, to get him to understand that life is getting ready to start. It's going to be different now. Johnson also said coming into this draft, he had a little red flag here, a little red flag there. They always do. It's always the same guys. If you got a little red flag here and a little red flag there, eventually you're going to F it up because it's always the same, guys. And this goes back to the 70s with a relief pitcher named Steve Howe of the L.A. Dodgers. I started paying attention to this when I was like 16. Dude, it's always Steve Howe. It's always the same clowns. It's always the same people. So this guy got a red flag, a couple here, a couple there, which means he was a pain in the prick back in college. But now he gets into the NFL. And what? Money and fame is going to make him less of a pain in the prick? I don't think so. Anyway, coming into the draft, little red flag here, little red flag there. Wasn't the squeakiest, cleanest guy going. Just probably why he fell the second round instead of late first. Went into a great situation in Kansas City, a great environment, they know how to handle situations that may be a little rocky. 
coming in. But Keyshawn goes on. I'm generally mad at him because he knows better. And I know he knows better. All you got to do a couple years ago, look at Henry Ruggs. I knew him too. Tried to tell him the same things. You can't be. It's different now. You ain't going to get that pass the way you would in college in those situations. You know, I got a lot of passes during my time in high school, in college. Probably been stopped 100 times on the highway between Bloomington and Indianapolis on 37. Probably got two tickets total. I understand not paying attention. But this stuff, this drag racing is just idiotic. And somehow, some way, this is a thing. I mean, let's be honest. We saw it with the Georgia idiots, which resulted in a death, a couple deaths. We've seen it left and right. Henry Ruggs is now in jail for a long, long time, or at least supposed to be in jail for a long, long time. And a guy like Rasheed Rice is lucky to have a guy like Keyshawn Johnson that actually cares. He's lucky to have an organization like the Kansas City Chiefs. But you don't think about that, right? You don't think about that when it's, you know, Saturday night and I want to rock, want to get a belly full of beer. I'm singing today, and I like my voice. That was a little Elton John. Saturday night's all right for fighting. If you haven't heard it, play it. You'll like it. It'll make your workouts better. True story. Anyway, this guy, Watt Rice, is very, very lucky. But he ain't going to learn. He's not going to learn. I'm telling you. How many times did you hear the name Pac-Man Jones involved in something stupid? How many times have you heard Antonio Brown, uh, Le'Veon Bell involved in something stupid? It all goes back to Steve Howe. Look him up. Like seven drug suspensions back in the 70s. He was like the best relief pitcher in baseball. Maybe the highest paid playing for the Dodgers. Look, it's the same people over and over and over again. And a little red flag here and a little red flag there. For every guy that you hear that overcomes being a complete pain in the ass, jackass, criminal, whatever in college, that's one. There's about 10 of them, 20 of them, 30 of them that keep acting like dumbasses. It's science. It just is. Pain in the ass given money, given prestige, given glory equals bigger pain in the ass. Very rarely does it mean less pain in the ass. Hey, we got the feminists mad. Yeah, we continue to have the feminists mad. National Organization of Women. The National Organization of Women wants dudes to compete against women. How about that? Now, I just want to say that again. The National Organization of Women wants transgender men to compete against women. It's a feminist group, this National Organization of Women. They are of the belief that biological men should be allowed to compete in women's sports. And as for those who are of a differing opinion, then we, of course, are white supremacists. That's right. That's right. That's what we are. Okay. That's awesome. All right. Fantastic. Well, I I guess, okay. I didn't know. I guess we all, you know, I guess we found out that even the organization. Even the organization that says National Organization for Women, official Twitter, now Action Center, all right, wants dudes to play against women or else if you protest that, you're a white supremacist. Here's the deal. Uh, Now we have specifically taken issue with the Independent Council on women's sports announcing that it will be exclusively funding support for a lawsuit against the NCAA and its regulations allowing male athletes to compete in women's sports. It's worth noting that Now's post specifically states making people believe there isn't enough space for trans women in in sports is white supremacy. Yeah, right. 
There you go. The argument surrounding trans athlete has nothing to do with trans athletes being barred from competing in sports in general, but instead trans athletes competing in women's sports. Now, here's what I've said. Hey, I don't care if you compete. Go compete with the men. Repeat after us. Repeat after us. Weaponizing womanhood against other women is white supremacy. Patriarchy at work. Really? Making people believe there isn't enough space for trans women in sports is white supremacist patriarchy at work. Really? I Good. Go play with the men. Why you got to play against the women? I'd be interested in anybody's reaction to that. I've really never heard a reaction to that. I seriously have it. I've not heard one reaction to my suggestion that since it's arbitrary, that people, men to women, women to men, compete against women, both, both sides, why can't it be equally as arbitrary and say, look, you're competing against men? I wonder how the national organization would feel about that. There are different levels of athlete, but I'll go compete against the women right now. Why is that? Easier? You could win? Why aren't you competing against the men? Look, hey, seems easy to me. Doesn't seem to be any problem to me. I don't know. If you're a woman transitioning to a man, play with the women. If you're a man transitioning to women, play with the, play with the men. That seems easy, too. I don't like it, but I mean, why is it all National Organization of Women? Why is it always against the women? And why aren't you standing up for women? Honest to God, you got 0.001% of the world are transgender athletes. Why aren't you standing up for 50% of the population with their women? I get it. You're woke. I get it. You're trying to get down for the cause. I understand. But it's total and complete crap. It is. It's complete and utter garbage. Total garbage. Hey, I like this. Uh, Terry McDonough, who is the brother of uh, what's his face? What the hell is his name? The, uh, the announcer. I worked with him. Sean McDonough. I'm sorry. He got himself three mil from the Arizona Cardinals. They fired Terry. And you know what? The biggest scumbag owner in football, Michael Bidwell, ripped his ass. I mean, they defamed him. For some reason, they felt the need that firing McDonough wasn't enough. No, no, we can fire him, but you know what? We got to talk bad about him, too. 62-page decision dated March 29, Jeffrey Mishkin, the arbitrator appointed by NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell, which is amazing. So Roger Goodell, who works for the owners, gets to appoint the independent arbitrator. And that independent arbitrator works for Goodell, right? I mean, that's unless it's a voluntary position, and Goodell works for the owner. So this is actually amazing. Uh, the arbitrator determined that the Cardinals and their owner, Michael Bidwell, defamed McDonough with malice in a multi-page statement to media organizations that accused McDonough of spousal abuse and neglect of his disabled adult daughter both of which McDonough has denied. I don't know why you got to do that. I don't know why you fired the guy. Why you got to defame him? Does it make you feel better? Is it one of those deals where you're like, oh, man, the more I talk about this guy, the better I feel about firing him? Maybe you didn't think you should have fired him. I don't know why you did. But the truth of the matter is you must have felt bad about firing McDonough if you went out and you had to do all this talking. All this defaming, I don't know, just seems to me like maybe you ought to keep your mouth shut. Hey, a couple things interesting from the world of college basketball. Bronny James, son of LeBron, is leaving USC. His coach, Andy Einfeld of USC, just left to go to SMU. SMU is getting into the ACC, which is a really good move. For SMU, whether it's a good move for the ACC or not, hell, I don't know. But I will say this about Bronny James. You know, you're supposed to come into college and you're supposed to dominate, particularly if your name is LeBron James or Bronny James. Well, it doesn't work that way because you know what? A lot of other players are pretty good too. 
And in many cases, those players are 21, 22, 23 years old, and they've been in weight rooms, and they've worked hard. Bronny James is a nice player. If his name wasn't Bronny James, he'd have never been the recruit that he is, but he's a good player. He's good enough to play at that level. He would never have been a McDonald's All-American, but I'll say this. I hope he's smart enough to go on a path that a lot of kids did. I averaged, not me, he averaged four and a half as a freshman. Maybe six to eight as a sophomore, 12 to 14, all conferences as junior and senior. I don't know. It's a pretty good path. Or, and this is according to LeBron James, hey, look, he's his own man. He has a tough decision to make. And among those tough decisions, it is rumored, that he is going to sign a two-way deal with the NBA, which means he's going to play G League and play here. Look, I don't know, and I really don't care. But I do know this. I do know this, that Bronny James seems like a really good kid. He seems like a great kid. And if he is smart and wants to enjoy and get the most out of his basketball career, he will go about the business of developing in college. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just saying. The other thing is, This is interesting, too, the must bus. Eric Musselman, son of Bill, has done a really good job at Arkansas. He has. Well, now, for whatever the reason, and there's a lot of weirdness with this whole Arkansas thing, a lot of weird-ass rumors about Arkansas basketball, about their players and their sexual proclivities, and I don't know. It's stuff that I legitimately never heard in my life in basketball. But the must bus who gets a sold-out Bud Walton Arena and one of the most, I don't know, crazy fan bases in all the country is now emerging as a front-runner, allegedly, for the USC job. Huh. USC averages about 4,500 per game. There is less interest in USC than in a good Mac school. And you're competing against pretty good teams as you come into the Big Ten. Maybe the must bus wants to coach in the Big Ten. I don't know. But I do know this. It is fascinating. It is. It's fascinating that he is looking at this job because I'm telling you, there's more money, there's more interest at Arkansas than damn near any other school in the country. But you got to live in Fayetteville, Arkansas, which, by the way, isn't bad. I was there last year for the NCAA softball tournament. It wasn't bad. It was fine. I mean, what the hell? All right, I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back to how we opened the show. It is time. Look at me, you TV executives. It is time. It is time for you white, black, whatever TV executives to grow a pair and stop the racism that's on Fox, that's on ESPN, that's on FS. Well, just stop it when it comes to sports. I'm going to give you a little listen of what I'm talking about. Paul Pierce, the noted druggy, boozy, hookery, ridiculous human being that won a title, so we're all supposed to genuflect to his 12th grade or 5th grade education. He had this to say about Caitlin Clark and who she's beating up on. It's not, it's, let me, it's, it's beyond that, Key. I'm, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to just keep it 100 with you. We saw a white girl in Iowa do mm-hmm. it to a bunch of black girls. Mm-hmm. Well, of course. That, that yeah. made it like, oh, <laughs> that gave my respect. That gave my respect. I, I hear you. You're like, right. that's like, oh, she didn't do this to, to uh, some other little white girls that was over mm-hmm. here in, yeah. in, in Colorado, wherever. She mm-hmm. did it to some girls <laughs> from, from LSU, yeah. who we did. thought were some dogs. Defending champs. Defending yeah. champs, mm-hmm. and put them on her knee and spanked them. Spanked them. And so <laughs> that, and it's, I know, but I didn't expect. Yeah, I don't know what to tell you, man. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, I, I, I don't know what to tell you. Why is it always white and black? Why are white people under attack by black athletes? Why? I mean, there were black kids on Colorado that were pretty good. I mean, they were good enough to get to the Sweet 16, and she kicked their ass. I mean, that gains my respect. Oh, you're an idiot. You know, it's always that way, though, like Jokic, right? Big, fat, ridiculous Perkins, can't vote for a white guy. You know, the racism has just become, and I'm going to call it out, and it's to no avail. 
look, white dude executive of Fox or white dude executive of ESPN, they don't give a rat's ass. They just don't want to be called bad names. They just don't want to be called sexist, misogynist, racist. They don't. And the fact of the matter is they're chicken shit. I would have fired him immediately. I'd have been like, you know what, enough. You want to talk about her? You want to talk about them? You want to talk about the game? You want to talk about how she's whooping up on folks? Great. But the blatant racism really has got to stop. No, it really does. And it's not going to. Of course it's not going to. I mean, there's no chance it's going to stop. But the truth of the matter is, um, you know, if it would if it were me. If I were an executive, if I were in a position of power, it would be simply this. Hey, uh, Keyshawn, get your stuff. You're done. What, man? Yeah, 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 no, no. Yeah, what, man? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, no, no, no. What, man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good. Goodbye. You're done. It's over. Get out of here. Hasta la vista. That would be it. We're not doing this race crap. We're not going to come at white people every day. I get it. It sells. Hey, look, I get it. Oh, maybe it's payback. Maybe it's reparations. I don't know what the hell it is. I don't know. I honestly don't know. But what I do know is this. What I do know is, yeah, I've kind of had enough. I've had enough. And usually if I've had enough, pretty much, I don't know, if anybody sees this video, you're all going to be nodding your head going, you know what, Uh, me too. Because I basically, when I get enough, it's basically – you as well. It just is. And Keyshawn Johnson needs to be fired or not even brought back. I don't even know if he's got a contract. I mean, at, at some point, if you're running a organization that is a public news organization, sports organization, movie organization, how about you have some balls? How about you stand up the stupid? That should be our next T-shirt. Stand up the stupid with Paul Pierce's drunk, high ass all over it. 